Hello and welcome to Grizzly and Bear, currently not of Elendi. As you may know, we did spend some time in a beautiful house in Akba, Japan. I want to chop my mullet off. Earning your keep, little Frenchie. Paying the rent. Is it a little bit strange doing the gardening? We don't usually have a garden. Thank you. <laughs> That's mine. Check it out. Zoe and Aris, who happen to be two of our amazing patrons as well, have sent us these incredible goodies. My name is Ayako Bacon. I'm from Yokohama. My name is Dan Bacon. I hail from Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. Hi. This is not my good side though. We met in Yokohama about 20 years ago. I started skiing here in Japan for the first time and coming up to the Japanese Alps every weekend basically during the winter. Kept coming back to Hakuba. Hakuba means in kanji, which is Japanese character, the white horse. The awesome snow, the variety of the terrain is, is unmatched here. Dan convinced me yeah. to come to Hakuma. And so we talked about buying a house and yeah, we bought a holiday house. With the idea that we would rent it out part time. The best decision I made. Typically Hakuma is a pretty sleepy kind of country town. It's a farming community of about 9,000 people. December through to the end of March it explodes with the ski season here and the official numbers are about 200,000 people, so it goes off. That's also a unique part of Hakuba. Jumps from this little sleepy country village to this international ski destination. Mm. Out of all the people that come, the Aussies are definitely the loudest. So it's referred to as Japao, an abundant powder snow. The cold winds come down from Siberia and hit the Sea of Japan, and it gets blown up and creates this ideal situation to create powder snow. It sort of vortexes into this snow machine and we're right where it dumps. Coming down through some of these amazing forested areas full of trees and ravines and wild animals and you're just like carving up amazing powder. It's nothing like it. We do various things up here. We run accommodation in the winter time. We run a pub. We also got involved with launching the Huckabee Brewing Company. Together with our business partner Dan Coburn, we started Huckabee Brewing Company. Currently, I think there's uh, seven beers that are being produced. Gas makes the pressure. This chills the water and makes the beer cold. We felt very lucky to be a part of the Hakba community for a little while. We were invited to the Sunday barbecue, a real mix of cultures. Yummy, 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 delicious. That's so cool. <laughs> Japanese barbecue is the other one. If you like that fatty meat, then the wagyu is great. I prefer like the Aussie meat. More, more meat to it, right?
washing. <laughs> and I know how good this cheesecake is. Cheesecake. Wow. Do you know where we're we going? I've got no idea. Ta-da! Ta-da! According to this sign, this shrine was built about 820-ish. Mist <laughs> falling shrine. Suba. Shrine is for Shinto. Temples are for Buddhist. Japanese people believe 880 gods exist in the world, which is in the air, which is in a rock, which yes. is in a big trees, which is in the ocean. Everything has a god. That's how Japanese people um, originally think. As a surprise birthday present for Lee, Ayako organized a traditional blessing ceremony at their local shrine. It was a very unique experience. Can you hear us? I can't hear you at all. Hello, Steffi. What an ugly picture that is. <laughs> mum cooks a famous chocolate cake. What do we call it, Mum? The Devil's Food Cake. So now you're going to talk us through trying to cook the chocolate Devil's Food Cake. For this recipe, you need butter, milk, sugar, self racing flour, pure cocoa, eggs, bicarb soda, and vanilla essence. You've got these pans like this. We've got two of them. Cut a round of paper and put it in the bottom. Oh, we need baking paper, don't we? I don't think we've got that. Waxed paper. Oh, okay. yeah, do you want it? Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you pass it through? Well, that's pretty and good. So Cream the butter and the sugar. Separate your eggs. Beat the egg whites until they're stiff. Hey! Alright, my egg whites are stiff enough. Just put the beaters into the yolk. Add the egg yolks to the butter mixture. Dilute the cocoa with a little bit of hot water. We put too much in here. Add it to the butter mixture once again. I'm a messy cook. I have it everywhere. A half a teaspoon of bicarb, two cups of self raising flour, and put it into the sifter over some paper. A third of flour and a third of the milk, and then a third of flour, and then the th mixer, yep. a third of flour. One teaspoon of vanilla. I'm putting that in. You use a spoon, not the mixer, and you just uh, fold it. So you're lifting and folding. I promised uh, Dan and Ayako the world's best chocolate cake. Bake in two large sandwich dishes for 30 minutes. They don't tell you, but it's usually about 170. I think it's done. I get this and I'll ice mine and then I'll send you a photo. Bye bye, thank you so much, love you. Yeah, I love you yeah. too. See ya. See ya. I'm a bit embarrassed to show the cake. Our cake compared to mum's cake. Our excuses, no self-raising flour. 
in Japan. For the icing, you need to mix one cup of icing sugar, one tablespoon of cocoa, and one teaspoon of butter. Now, patisserie is bakery. No, patisserie is a shop that sells Ah, yes, okay. So, what's a bakery? What does it say? Can you read that for me, please, Shiori? Oh, Whoa! Maybe this is. Oh, oh no! Didn't want to cancel. They put this year already. Oh, it's oh my god! We kept the defender cake for the next day, but I can tell you, it was really difficult to finally cut into it. The time is fast approaching that we must leave our beautiful house and continue north. Grizzly will go back on bear today while I've got a weather window because it's looking like a lot of rain coming up. The day has come. It's time to move on. We are packing up. A while ago, we made a video on our equipment that we carry. A lot of people were quite surprised that we've got so much stuff, but we had some requests on how we store it. The roof box up there has all of our recovery equipment. Keep it as lightweight as possible. Our exhaust jack is up there, our slings. Up in there, we have our rock climbing crash pad. These side boxes carry our shower, gas bottles for the little blowtorch, the MSR dragonfly sits in the side, there will be some other stuff so that can't bounce around, tarpaulin, side box on the right hand side, we got the hiking poles, awesome woody, the rest of our training equipment will go in there, we're still in the process of packing, so the TRX, the elastic bands, the skipping ropes will go in that side box, the tent, two Helinox chairs and our little camping table. That used to be a storage area for spare parts. Now the diesel heater lives in there. The rear slide out drawer. This is what gives us a large amount of storage space. This was built so that the four wheel camper can be raised to clear the cab of the Land Rover Defender. Drill there, we've got our bry, some pots and pans that I use for outdoor cooking on the diesel stove. Those two waterproof bags there, the 20 litre and the 15 litre have our spare parts. That's pretty much all the spare parts that we carry for this vehicle. Don't overkill it with spare parts. You can order, get stuff sent. The rest is filled with rock climbing equipment. We've got chalk, harnesses, climbing bolts, anchors, and the big one, the camper legs. Our porter ledge tent, our rock climbing tent that we use for the side of the cliffs in the mountains, which we don't use very often, lives in there. So it is out of the way. We had to say goodbye to our friends. It's never easy, but it's a part of the nomadic life we have chosen. Next week, we're back on the road. Until then, take care. Bye bye. Coming? Done. Coming? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>